Meskipun jauh namun di hati Tawa candamu selalu temani Meski tak langsung menatapmu kawan Semangat belajarku takkan pernah padam Walau hanya di rumah saja Takkan padam semangat di jiwa Perjalanan yang ku lalui Kan ku bagi kisahnya Semuanya secara virtual. Pastikan untuk nonton, untuk melihat keseruan anak-anak ya. Hanya di Playground of Learning Journey. Learning Journey. Physically distant, virtually connected. Hi, welcome everyone. Good afternoon, respected teachers, guests, proud parents, and beloved students. Welcome to Chikal Talk Session 31, Reflections of Middle School Students. So Chikal Talk is one of the activities in our playground of Chikal Learning event. Thank you for coming today and sadly, this is the last day of our event. And first, and foremost, let me introduce myself. I am Atika Shahirna, a secondary visual arts teacher, and I will be your moderator for this session. Before we begin the individual students' presentation, let me give you a picture of what to expect for the next hour. So we have st two students from year seven and year nine of Sekolah Cikal Setu East Jakarta, who will present reflections of their learning journeys and each student will have a maximum of 10 minutes for their talk. The Q&A session using a chat room and after all the speakers are done, we will open a questions and answer session for 15 minutes. But you can start write your questions in the section, the comment section on YouTube. Please do uh, first come first serve and the audience is more than welcome to ask questions to all of the presenters. So today's speakers are Axel Sorianto from year seven, and he is live here, live presentation in here, and also Naira Azra Senen from year nine, it's also here. Thank you for coming in the weekend, guys. How are you? I'm good, miss. I'm Great. good, miss. Okay. Uh, we will have holiday soon and please enjoy this event before your holiday and before that uh, We have two Axel and Azra and let's begin with our first speaker Axel Surianto Who will be presenting his social studies reflection about the waste guide? Okay, it's global warming global warming is everywhere now and this is the most important thing that we need to be concerned of and please give a warm of welcome to Axel. Uh, Axel, you can greet the audience. Uh, hello guys, my name is Axel. Uh, I am year seven. I started from uh, year five exactly. And yeah, uh, I'm very excited. So I'm going to presentate about my social studies reflection about what I learned not exactly of about waste and yeah 
thank you everybody so let's get on to the video okay sorry about that we will know more about the content so i will play it soon enjoy hello guys my name is so Swedanta, and today i'm going to do my showcase for social studies so basically in this slide i'll be covering the importance of money financial management personal cash flow and the example of my cash flow result so yeah before i cover the table of contents i'm going to introduce myself my name is axel Suryanto, and today i will be acting as the role of your business partner the best of course and i will going to show you basically teach you all right so this is a, a quote a quote i just found okay yes now table of content first section okay so before we get to the importance of money i want to show you the definition of money first so if you don't know money is basically a currency like coins or banknote or in between money is very important because first of all it can be uh, you can it is you can use it everywhere to buy basic basic needs property and other stuff like electronics and properties yes the importance of money number one it is durable Money is created by special materials, not like straight up paper. That's why it can last really long and very flexible in two ways. Easy to bend, like to play with, kinda. And yeah, you can show off on people, okay. Number two, divisibility. Unlike all the currencies, present day money can be easily divided into different types of value, like $10, $20, $50, $100. Let's say that you have $100, but you want to divide it to two $50 bills. You can just do that. Yeah, that's that's really easy. So yeah, so the benefit of this, people can use money easily and effectively. Acceptability. Uh, it's acceptable because money is everywhere. Even if you go like from Indonesia to Canada, you can still use money like Canadian dollars. And yeah, it's it's everywhere. Number four, portability. Like the durable section, it is very portable, which means you can carry it anywhere for like, I say one year. Well, maybe more than that. Uh, it will still not remain bo broken or like, old number two what is financial management okay so, okay so this is a little bit difficult to simplify but management is the management of your money on your stock cash flow this means basically organizing your money like saving tax paying taxes buying stocks to make money and buying properties like company facility or hiring people basically it is important because we need to manage our money so we can buy our needs and save to potentially use it for more good use in the future ah yeah this is just uh, a cool time yay stonks number three so this is basically the main topic of the slide uh what is personal cash flow well say no more the man personal cash flow or management planner is a planner that contains information about your cash flow how many money you gain or lose and the result of your income so basically basically your income is how much you've gained like i do for example uh you make money for selling that is your income expensive is basically like 
for example, you sell hot dogs, uh, the income is how many money you make from hot dogs. And the expenses is basically the tools, the ingredients to make the hot dog. And that's that. So the income is basically, the, the result is basically the income and then the expenses minus. If there's still a number left, then that's your result. And yeah, also personal cash flow is important for like a goals, financial goal, which I'm going to show you my result of my financial, of my very own personal cash flow. So this is my financial goal and personal cash flow. I, I know as you see, it doesn't look like, like very, how do I say it? It doesn't look like very formal or like for business things, but trust me, man, uh, it's just like this. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, this is my financial goal, first of all. So my goal basically to save up for the goal is a pillow because I really need a pillow and a LED mean light. You know, I'm scared of the dark, man. I, I just, I, I need to light up my, I light up my, so I don't get scared. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is pretty outdated, completed by date. The es estimated cost mm, doesn't seem promising. So yeah, this is my goal and now my personal cash flow. So how do I make money? Uh, I do chores. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so this is my result. This is my, so I clean my friend's bedroom, washing dirty plates, clean my bedroom, making bread. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Cleaning my friend's bedroom, helping to clean the floor. floor. I mean, I get decent money plus my saving, but the problem is I don't, I only have enough money to buy LED mean light and the rest is not enough to buy a pillow. So that's, that's really bad. I mean, but the good thing is the rest of the money can go to my savings again. So I think it's a win, win for me, maybe. <laughs> also, I don't uh, get the, I don't have expenses because I'm not an adult, all right? And uh, the money I'm not using to buy stuff because I'm still a child, okay? Okay. So reflection. What did you learn to the topic you choose? What I learned to the topic I choose is that I learned a lot about financial management uh, and it's very beneficial. What were the challenges you did you ex did you experience? How did you overcome it? So, in creating the personal cash flow is by far doing chores. As far as I said, I don't really like it, but the thing is, at least at least I get benefits like getting money from it. So, that's good, right? Yeah. How will you use the things you learn in the future? So how will I use my knowledge in the future is basically I can make money more effectively, organizing money, saving money, creating a company, and you know, become a billionaire. I don't, it, it may happen. Okay, so this is our last quote. A picture is worth a thousand words and a Photoshop is worth a thousand lies. Thank you, everybody. Okay, yep. Well, Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot from this slide and I wish you farewell in this trying times. Credits to the slides go. I use template, really good website. I recommend you check it out and yeah, bye. Okay, thank you Axel for sharing your journey. Uh, please give a virtual round of applause for Axel's talk. Yay, you've done it this year. <laughs>
where is your video asa okay maybe one sentence like um this is your fourth year in chikal and then in the fourth year you already learn about a financial personal goal that's i think that's a really important thing to be learned i've never learned that thing in my middle school in first grade of middle school no i i don't care i, I just okay mom i, I got money and then i spend it for snacks but you've you've learned about it and then i'm sure you learned something you have write your reflection and then uh i just want to ask before we go to the next present there uh what you will do for your saving now after you learn about that uh i will pro i don't know what i will do yet probably just keep saving for the future or to buy food i don't know and yeah okay okay thank you for sharing and then uh um, wait here axel we will have a questions and answer session after all the presentee present the slides uh next last but not least we have our final speaker, Naira Azra, or we can call her Azra, who will be presenting her mathematics extended reflections about a do-it-yourself clinometer and a comic in mathematics. If you have questions for Azra and Axel, please write it in the comment section soon. Okay, please give a warm of welcome, Azra, and you can start. Okay, uh, so um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Azra. So today I will be presenting my uh, my uh, maths project, summative project in term three. So let me present my screen first. So, okay. So welcome to my Tikal talk session uh, in my part. I'm going to be presenting about my clinometer project. So first and foremost, let me introduce myself formally. Hello and welcome. I am Naira Azrasanen, or you can just call me Azra for short. And um, yeah, so some call me Monday, Senin, Selasa, Rabu, Kamis, Friday, Sunday, but just try to ignore that. So in this presentation, I will be explaining all about my math summatives in term three, project focused on the topic of trigonometry and its real life applications. So uh, before we start, let's talk about, let's just, I'm just going to show you a quote so you guys can also get your minds running on like maths and stuff like that. So um, this quote was made by a famous American mathematician. His name is William Paul Thurston and he quoted, mathematics is not about numbers equations, computations, or algorithms. It is just about understanding. So here's just a brief contents of the slides. There's going to be three segments. The first segment is going to be trigonometry in real life. The second segment will be the explanation about the project and its process. And the third segment is my reflection, which will be the end of the journey. So, uh, let's start the presentation with this question to get our minds running on the focus topic. So, trigonometry in real life. So, before we actually get to see trigonometry and how it's applicated in real life, we need to actually know what trigonometry is first. So, here's the big basics. The word trigonometry is a 16th century Latin derivative from the Greek words for triangle, which is trigonon and measure, metron. And trigonometry is basically a branch of mathematics that studies relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. So trigonometry is found all throughout geometry as every straight sided shape may be broken into as a collection of triangles. So what do I mean by this? Um, in trigonometry, you can find it in almost all parts of geometry, honestly. So for example, you have a rectangle, okay? You have a rectangle, and you can divide that rectangle into several parts to actually make more triangles, and you can measure maybe like the angles through it, or maybe the area of the rectangle, and that is actually a part of trigonometry. 
And here are some examples on how it actually looks like. For example, we have a rectangle on the side here and you can divide into three parts, which makes three triangles, or you can divide into more complex type of shape triangles. And in trigonometry, there are six functions of an angle commonly used in trigonometry and their names and abbreviations are sine, sin, cosine, cos, tangent, tan, cotangent, cot, secant, sec, and cosecant, CSC. So, yeah. So, um, when we talk about applicating trigonometry in real life, since we already got the basic idea of what is trigonometry, right? Um, how do we actually applicate it in real life, right? So one of the really uh, common and popular ways that trigonometry is actually applicated in real life is a clinometer. So what is a clinometer? Uh, so a clinometer, or otherwise known as a inclinometer, is an instrument or tool used for measuring angles of slope, elevation, or depression of an object with respect to gravity's direction. And a clinometer is used to measure many, many things, such as heights of trees, poles, towers, and buildings. And you can also use it to measure a lot of um, real-life occupations actually use this clinometer to measure slopes for preliminary surveying, grade work, and site drainage. So the clinometer is, you can't take this for granted. This is something that is very useful in our daily lives. And it actually makes our lives in, me in measuring, for example, the height of a building way more easier. So for example, you can get two choices. For example, if you want to measure it using manual, for example, um, metaran or like measuring tape, or just use a clinometer. So as you can see, using a clinometer from this picture looks really easy. You just need to point it somewhere and then you can just measure it using trigonometric uh, equations and also expressions. But of course, um, using the manual way would be harder, right? For example, you want to measure a height of a building and that building is really tall. and the tool that you only have is a measuring tape. So the way that we imagine how we manually measure the building would be trying to you know, measure the whole building with that single measuring tape, right? And that would be really um, repot or kind of hard. So that's why clinometers actually make our lives way more easier. So here's an example on how it can be applicated in real life. So um, here's a comic that I made. This is one of my products that I have to make for my summative term three project. It's actually a comic based on uh, real life happenings or real life uh, applications of trigonometry. So I won't really explain much about this comic and how I made it or something like that. I will just explain the plot so here's a really, really simple example on how you can actually use trigonometry and a clinometer in real life. So there's going, there's two characters on screen, as you can see. There is an orange and a yellow character. I didn't give them names, so I just basically call them orange and yellow. So um, yellow, who is a pretty ambitious character, wanted to make a project just for fun, just for entertainment, because Yellow was actually really bored at home. And um, so they decided to make a project. And the project that they made was actually a water slide. So they were planning to build a water slide on the roof so they could have fun with it. And how do they do that? They do that by using the method of um, using a clinometer and using uh, trigonometric functions and equations to measure how the slope of the slide would be and how they could build that slide on top of the roof accurately. So in the end, they were able to make the, the water slide on the roof and they had fun. So that is one of the very simple ways on how it can be applicated in real life, which is you can make your own um, water slide on top of your roof.
So moving on to the next segment is the project and process. So this will be an introspection to this year's ninth grade term three summative project. So here's the project's buildup. So first, there is three parts that make up this whole project. So the first part is the unit test, which is basically an assessment in the form of a time test, like a usual normal test for students' understanding and knowledge of the topic learned. And the second segment will be making a, your own DIY climbometer, which will look something like this. And the assessment is for innovation, self-regulation, um, and interactive learning through the applications of maths in real life. And the third and final, which is basically your end product of what you have to make, is transforming it into a literary product. And an assessment for crea creativity, uh, communication, and growth of community context through shared visual and or literary mediums. Or you could also make a video. So it doesn't have to be literary, but mostly, um, so I made my product into a literary product, which is a comic. So either can be story or um, comic or maybe a video. So the vision of the project is that students are able to apply their knowledge of the trigonometric ratios, which is sine, cosine, and tangent, to measure the height of various objects. And the missions or the objectives are is that the targeted dimensions from Chico dimensions are communicative and innovative. And the criteria for MYP of IB is the criterion B, C, and D, which is investigating patterns, um, communicating, and applying mathematics in real life context. So the first project activity is that we are going to make our own DIY climometer. So as we know, Clinometers are very, very useful in our daily lives. But, you know, why buy one when you can just make one yourself with maybe cheaper alternatives? So uh, this is really easy to make. This is what your end product will look like. And yes, it looks very different from um, the one that looks like you, just, you hold it like a gun like that. Um, so how you make it is pretty simple. So first you print out your own. Uh, protractor because um, making this clinometer actually needs a bit a medium-sized protractor about this big so I didn't have any of that um, those kinds of size protractors in my house so I decided to print one and just uh, take an image from Google and resize it and print one so what you need are just glue sellotape um, cardboard and your printed protractor, a straw, some string, and also maybe some paper clips or other weights. So um, first, what you need to do is print your pr printed protractor and cut it up and stick it on a cardboard. So it will look something like this, this thing, this protractor. You've got a cardboard protractor. And then uh, after that, you want to um, kind of punch a hole through it here, uh, either using a toothpick or sapolidi. Also, you can do that. And then after that, you can take a bundle of string, of cotton string, or any type of string, and then you cut it into your desired um, length. I cut mine about 17 centimeters to 20 centimeters. I think that's the perfect uh, length for making your own DIY clinometer. And then after that, you would you would grab your straw and then you can cut it into a more desirable size and stick it on your protractor like this with some sellotape. As you can see, I added some sellotape over there to hold the straw down. And then finally, you can um, put your weights uh, on the bottom here. I use paper clips and I really recommend using paper clips because you can adjust the weight on your own by adding or maybe taking away the paper clips. So it would be um, balanced, you know, the weight. And I recommend using eight paper clips uh, for the weights because I think it's the perfect weight for measuring uh, and making the DIY clinometer. 
So uh, how do you use this DIY clinometer? It's very, very simple. So for example, um, you want to measure a statue or maybe measure the height of a building. So how you use it is very, very simple. So this straw actually acts as a telescope where you can just point the straw up to the apex or the top of the building. And then as you point up, the you can actually see the string going, uh, like landing on a few numbers, right? So when you actually point up, it's actually measuring the angle. So what angle is it actually measuring? So it's measuring something we call as the depressing and the depressant angle. So it's the angle that goes down from a triangle like this. So when you measure up like that and it lands on a single number, for example, here, and you can see here that the angle measured is 50 degrees. So that's how you can measure with your clinometer. So here is some pictures of me. Uh, measuring with my clinometer is um, so this is the building that I measured here is me measuring with my own DIY clinometer and also me measuring the distance between me and from where I'm measuring and between the building so lastly to make the end product we need to make our comic so what I a, a platform that I used for making comic is Canva. I really recommend making a comic in Canva because they have a tons of creative templates and it's really easy to use and you just need to type in in the bubbles and edit some stuff and you finish. You got your comic. So the last segment, the end of the journey, is going to be a look back of this project. So me doing this project, it took approximately 72 man hours. So it's not that bad, right? It only took approximately about two to three days to finish. But honestly, I think if you just focused on this project, on working this project, you could just finish it in a day. Because all the steps are very easy to, um, to follow. And also, Making and doing this project is really fun and inter interactive because you're not only sitting in front of your screen, you're actually going outside, measuring buildings, making clinometers, and also making an interactive type of fun story that you can share with the whole world. So uh, because I was focusing on other um, summatives doing it, it took me two to three days, but honestly, I think you can finish it in one day. So as a conclusion, the exciting attributes from this uh, project is that I actually enjoyed the project a lot in this particular term, in term three, since it incorporates both interactive learning with the projects by testing our knowledge and problem solving skills on how to include what we as students learn in math class. And the obstacles that I faced was that although my project was pretty fun to do by itself, of course, um, every student must face the obstacles of demotivation and of course the biggest challenge I think for all if not most students is procrastination so thankfully I got I overcome this challenge by um, you know my strategy is fairly simple I just use the method of balancing my rest time and my school time so I get so I balance out my free time and my school time and um, it really helped me to really build that motivation for doing the summative project, as well as really increase my work quality. Because if I finish it as fast as I can, I don't think um, uh, my work quality as well as the quality of my project would be as good as what, as how I am satisfied right now. So lastly, would I do it again? Yes, of course. It was a really fun and interactive project to begin with and easily, and had easily enjoyable steps to follow to which students would definitely smoothly execute. This is very, very interactive and very easy to do. So um, yeah, thus far I haven't seen anything I would change in this project and I think it's a really great activity. So before we end this uh, presentation, here's just some credits for the presentation. Special thanks to all of Swatanga for making this all possible, and also my friends and family, and especially my math teacher, Paapri, and also credits to Slides Carnival for making this template. Shout out to them because they made my uh, slides look really, really attractive. 
So that's it. Thank you for listening in. If there's any questions or queries, you can ask me in the Q&A questions, Q&A session later, or you can find me at my school email and also my WhatsApp number. And here are also some helpful resources that I used in this um, slides presentation. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. And thank you so much for listening in and coming to this Tikal Talk. Okay, thank you, Azra. Thank you so much for sharing your journey this year. Let's give a final round of applause for all of our speakers today who have done a wonderful job at presenting their learning journey this year. Although um, it's wonderful to hear different insights of you have been through out this interesting year, despite learning mainly through virtual classroom. And this is a pandemic situation that only happened like once in a hundred years. So we really, like me as teachers and also parents, really appreciate your effort, Azra and also Axel. Thank you so much for completing this in a good way, in a good result. Okay, you got this, you've done this. And semoga semangat ya buat next year ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can see many, many comments here. Yeah, uh, Bu Risma. Uh, there is from your math teacher, Pak Ahmad Aprianto is here, saying woohoo and good point, Azra. Quality of your product is important. And there is your friend, uh, Axel Raga Asandin Dharma, and second place, I don't know, and also Miss Tita. And then after this, uh, with all of the presenters are done presenting your uh, journey, learning journey, we will have a questions and answer session. So there are also many questions from the audience. Uh, first is from Ibu Dini Rahmawati. Why did you decide to create comics to explain trigonometry concept? So that's such a fun way for presenting your idea. Okay, Azra, you can explain. Okay, so um, I chose making a comic because, you know, uh, most of us are really just like visual learners, you know? So a majority of us are visual learners. So I think by incorporating, you know, just really putting that into a comic, I think that's a great way to just exp express it through a visual uh, medium. And... Um, using the knowledge that I gained from trigonometry, they are able to visualize how trigonometry actually can be applicated in real life. Because you can't just see like, for example, you're measuring a statue, you can't just see the triangle right there, right? You have to imagine it. And with this comic, I can maybe help a lot of maybe visual learners to imagine how trigonometry can actually be visualized in the real world by just making a comic and using those drawings to actually express how trigonometry can be applied in real life. So, yeah. Okay, because uh, trigonometry is a challenging topic yeah, to yeah. be discussed about and you can make it interesting through a comic. That's a really good. Okay, uh, this is from Risma for Axel. Do you agree that managing money is important since someone is still a kid why and why not is it important for a kid i think not? uh in my opinion i think managing money is really important but not when you're really young but for example if you're at like my age for example i'm 13 which is really young Maybe, maybe a little bit old. Uh, basically, try to save up money or doing chores like that. That's when you're like young. But if you're an adult, managing money is very important because like you need money to uh, buy the things you need, like needs, basic needs, uh, or to invest, make money, and yeah, save up. okay so uh you think it's it's yeah it's averagely important to learn it sooner than later right 
maybe you have a comment about these questions, Azra. Do you think it's important for a kid to learn about? I think, um, I mean, I think it's really impressive that he's actually learning this at such a young age, you know, because uh, when I was his age, actually, um, I didn't learn it like as deep as he did. So I think, you know, just implementing this um, topic in a very early age, I think it's also, um, you know, useful and important. So I think, yeah, it's pretty cool to see that <laughs> he already knows how to manage money more, more, even more than I do. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and you will be taking care of your money more, right, Axel? Because yeah. you need to do chores to get that. So it's a really important money. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. It's also for you, Axel. There are many questions for you. So who inspired you to dive down into financial topic? Uh, who inspired me is it's probably my year seven social study teacher, uh, Miss Betty. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Betty, guide you to research deeper about this financial topic. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, but you said in your presentation, your parents also like helping you to like managing the the course and everything. Who, who is your dad or your mom? Uh both of them. Okay. Great. You have a great family. And okay, for Azra, next questions. Even though your use of clinometer is for apply, applying trigonometry, how can other students, maybe the younger ones, who aren't learning trigonometry, use the clinometer? Mm, okay, so, so yes, using the clinometer is for maybe the main goal of it is for applying trigonometry. So for maybe younger students who want to try uh, using the clinometer and stuff like that, um, they can maybe apply it through, you know, I mean, since this is uh, such an interactive activity where you can just go outside and just measure everything you like. So I think um, since the really, this is a really basic concept of using this trigonometry, I think they can just use it, you know, who aren't learning uh, maybe trigonometry and stuff like uh, sin costan or angles uh, or maybe just like about triangles like that. They can uh, maybe explore more onto the basic concepts, maybe about more onto angles, how you can measure, you know, um, the angle from this building to the ground. So more onto the basic concepts, you can actually still use this clinometer to um, apply the basic knowledge of maths in our daily lives. So, yeah. Maybe for the younger one, you can make it bigger or more colorful yeah. because, yeah, to make it more interesting, maybe. Um, maybe you can try later on, Axel. You will be grade nine soon in two years. <laughs> Okay, next question for Azra. I always love your creativity. Okay, it's an appraisal from Ibu Dina. Uh, I remember when you were in grade four. Also, oh, when? Uh, how long you've been in Chikal, Azra? Oh, uh, I've been in Chikal since uh, junior. Since junior, okay. Kindergarten? Yeah, kindergarten, yeah. Okay, that's a long year. Okay, you made paper toy in grade four. So this is your teacher. Say hello, mm -hmm. hello, Budina, <laughs> or something like that. That was really good, and I tried to sell it to your friends. So you managed selling it or not? Uh, yeah, it was actually. Uh, I did make. I forgot what I made as a paper toy, but yeah, I think I remember that I sell something as a paper toy, and I think a lot of the students bought it, but. Since I was um, 
didn't really know about how to manage money so i guess the business like went down quickly so i only managed mm -hmm. to sell it for about a week so yeah Okay, so uh, Axel topic in here is really important for you. Mm -hmm. Thank God you two together here so you can learn with each other and maybe start a business and become a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Axel, like what you said, <laughs> who knows? Okay, uh, next for Axel, uh, how about from your personal experience? What element of financial management help you the most? So, Ah, so what element of financial management, so management that help you, help the, you most? the most? For example, like when you're learning about uh, the income and outcome, like knowing an income, how much is the income is, is helping you better or knowing how much is the outcome, it helps you the most or knowing how to get the money, how hard to get the money is help you to understand more about money and appreciate I don't know. Maybe you can share. I think I think the what part of element that helped me the most is probably everything. Well, not everything, but the the main topics like making money, saving money, uh, income minus expenses, and yeah. So. Learning kind learning of it is kind of hard because I'm I'm still a kid, so uh making money like from selling, well it's easy but managing money is very difficult. And okay. yeah. Okay, so uh, your experience is uh, all of the aspect, all of the elements in financial management is helping you to understand more about money yeah, and uh, appreciate it more okay don't forget the charity also if you be a billionaire okay uh don't forget about me yeah don't forget about miss atika if you become a billionaire and now uh that is the last question so thank you so much for all the questions and feedback given for the presenters. It's very delightful to see such impactful and powerful projects of all of, of Azra and Axel. Thank you so much. Uh, let's give all the presenters today another virtual round of applause and words of encouragement for their achievement. And I would like to remind you all that this event doesn't stop today even this is the last day after the session there are still chikal talks final session at two until three with ibu najila sihab and other chikal students so you can also browse through our virtual gallery on our website you can see all of our event on our website or check out other stream events on sekolah chikal official youtube channel Lastly, I would like to say thank you one more time to all of the audience here today, fellow students, proud parents, and also respected guests. Thank you for having me as your moderator. Good afternoon and see you later. Bye.